Good morning, my walking warriors. <clears throat> Sorry for the loudness in the background. I had to pick another place to walk today. Unfortunately, my normal walking spot that I've been filming that's a little bit quieter is being having some landscape work done on it, and I figured this is the lesser of two evils. So, sorry about that. How are you doing today, my beautiful people? I hope this day finds you happy and collected. I hope you were able to get some good sleep last night, and I hope you were able to get out there and walk this morning and get those endorphins pumping. So I had an interesting question pop up in a conversation yesterday with my mom. I asked her what kinds of topics I could cover during my video shoots. And she said, why don't you talk to people and tell them about how you gained all of your weight to begin with? And I thought, wow, that's really a pretty good idea. So that's what I'm going to discuss today is the mistakes I made that caused me to gain all of my weight to begin with which was overeating, obviously, binge eating, eating because I was bored, eating my emotions away, and whatnot. Um, I have a tendency that when I'm upset, I have to be sticking something in my mouth, whether it be I stress smoke, which is not a good thing, and I'm actually wanting to quit smoking, sort of. I'm still almost there, um, but I do tend to eat when my emotions are really high. Also, when I get bored, I eat, and I feel like I have to be putting something in my mouth. <clears throat> so there's that. So when I was in high school, Good morning. When I was in high school, I weighed 186 and I wore a size 16. And I got a job at a local fast food restaurant my senior year. And that is not a great place to work when you're already overweight and you love eating McDonald's. No offense to McDonald's or anything, but that's where I was working, and this in no way, shape, or form video is sponsored by McDonald's. So, I of course would take advantage of the free meals that they would offer you for your working your shift, and I would eat as much as I could, and then after McDonald's, I started working at another local fast food restaurant, Arby's, which this video is not sponsored by Arby's either, which actually kind of helped because I didn't like Arby's food. So that was kind of helpful. I figured if I was going to work at a fast food restaurant, that was probably better for me since I didn't like their food. And <clears throat> so I started working at Arby's and that's where I met my ex-husband and he and I got together and I got pregnant with my son and I used the excuse when I was pregnant with my son that oh I need to eat as much as I can for the sake of the baby the baby's hungry so I'm hungry the baby needs to be fed so I need to be fed and that's just not the way to think about it. The way to think about it is the baby needs nourishment, therefore I need to eat a healthy meal. The baby needs to be um, taken care of, therefore I need to take care of myself. Not every hour to the baby's hungry, therefore I need to be hungry. So, <clears throat> I used that excuse and then my ex-husband and I started having problems in our marriage and 
I would stress eat and I would eat because I was overly emotional. And that is definitely not the way to go. And then I got pregnant again. And I gained a couple pounds with that pregnancy. Only a couple though because we ended up losing that baby. And then I got pregnant again with our 19 year old. And I would use the same excuses as I did with the 22 year old about the baby needs to be fed. Therefore, and we were still having problems. Let's just sum this up really quick and say we had problems the whole time we were married. And it was not a very happy marriage at all. Um, and then I got pregnant with our daughter eventually. And during that time, I actually lost a hundred pounds because we were going through a divorce and the stress was killing me. And I was kept being told by the doctor that you need to eat more. You keep losing weight. This isn't safe for you. This isn't safe for the baby. So towards the end of my pregnancy, my uh, um, appetite started to pick up and I was able to start eating normally as you would during a pregnancy but it wasn't healthy options it was constantly takeout and then after she was born I just kind of stopped eating because by that point I had filed for divorce, but I was going through the stress of being a single parent. So I was eating a lot from the stress of being a single parent. And my mom was helping take care of the kids a lot. I would stay at my mom's a lot. And I would eat at work, I would eat on the way home, and if I stayed the night at my mom's house, I would eat on the way home or on the way to her house, and then I would get to her house and I would eat there too. It was just, like I said, I'm a binge eating stress eater. So then I met my husband and I moved in with him and I would cook us meals and my husband's kind of a big guy you know he's six foot seven and weighs about 380 and I would cook these big elaborate meals and I would always eat a bunch and then when I got pregnant with my youngest I would overeat a lot when I was pregnant with him Again, it was the hot Cheetos and milk that got to me. That's all I craved. Well, that's not all I craved, but that's one of the things that I craved. I craved a lot of different foods with them. And I kept telling my husband, you know, if I'm craving it, the baby needs it. And so... I would eat whatever I was craving and I ended up getting gestational diabetes when I was pregnant with him. I was eating like pints of haagen and large Ron's ice cream cones from this little drive through called Ron's ice cream and burger joint. And I would eat McDonald's all the time. And we would have pizza all the time. And just 
all sorts of stuff and I gained a huge majority of weight when I was pregnant with my youngest which wasn't good and I wasn't doing anything to counteract what I was eating I wasn't getting out there, I wasn't exercising, I wasn't walking, I wasn't doing anything. I would just sit on my butt, on my couch, and do absolutely nothing while I was gorging on food. So basically, I guess what I'm saying is, is don't overeat, don't eat your feelings away. I realize now that if I would have had a therapist back then, and if I would have had somebody to talk to, then I wouldn't have eaten my feelings away as much as I did. Because now I have a therapist and he really helps me and I talk to him and I deal with my feelings with him instead of eating. And that's what I found has helped me the most is discussing my feelings with him and one of our biggest discussions now is even though I've lost all the weight I still look in the mirror and I still see myself as that 400 pound person and he calls it body dysmorphic phobia and <clears throat> i totally agree with them that that's what it is i just he just keeps telling me that i need to retrain my brain into my thinking about that but i'm not sure how to retrain my brain we're working on it though and we're working on how to retrain my brain with that line of thinking so um brain fart big brain fart <laughs> So anyways, we've discussed at, at length how I can manage my eating habits. And one of them is changing my habit of eating. So instead of eating all day long, just kind of graze. And by grazing, I mean, you know how you have pets out in a pasture and they graze all day long? You put a bale of hay out there so they can graze on the hay all day long. Pretty much the same ideas behind that. You have something sensible like fruits and veggie trays and whenever you get hungry, you just take a couple bites off of that. Or you have popcorn or pretzels or something sensible um so you eat your breakfast like this morning my breakfast was two eggo waffles and i like the blueberry the chocolate chip or the cinnamon toast those are my favorite ones i don't like the plain ones that much because i don't like the syrup i don't put syrup on my waffles in fact, Eggo waffles are the only kind of waffles I can eat. I can't eat regular waffles because I don't like regular waffles. So, I had two Eggo waffles, and if I get hungry later before lunchtime, I'll probably have a couple cherry tomatoes, or if we have them in the fridge, which I don't know if we do, I'll have a handful of cherries or a couple strawberries or sometimes if we have them I'll have an orange or a tangerine and then
um, I'll have a sensible lunch. And then if I get hungry between lunch and dinner, I might pop another Eggo waffle into the toaster. Just one though. And then I'll have dinner. And then if I get hungry after dinner, I always um, measure out a cup of hot Cheetos and I'll have a cup of hot Cheetos. So I use measurements and if I don't have a measuring cup available to me, I've got this small Tupperware bowl that I'll put some hot Cheetos in and I'll eat them out of that, that small bowl because I know that that roughly equals a cup. I know just by looking at it where the cutoff line is. And as far as the body dysmorphic phobia, um, it's just a matter of retraining your brain. It's just a matter of trying to tell yourself, no, you're not that 100 pound person that you think you see in the mirror anymore. You are beautiful and you are 202 pounds. You are not the same person you used to be. And it's, like I said, it's just a matter of retraining your brain. So I'm interested, what are some thoughts or questions that you have for me? What are some things that you want me to talk about with you? What are some topics that you would like to hear about? Do you want my opinion on what's going on in the world today? Do you want to know more about my journey? Are you getting tired of hearing about my journey and you want to hear about something so completely random and off the charts? I had a question pop up yesterday on my video that said, wow, you must do a lot of journaling. How much journaling do you do? Yes, I do do a lot of journaling. Um, I haven't journaled in a couple weeks though, which I kind of feel bad for, but I do do a lot of journaling. It's, it, it helps me center myself. It's a form of meditation for me. And it just helps me get myself in a calm place with myself. And I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and the subscribe button. Those are always good things to do. Would you like to know my thoughts about the building or the condominium collapse down in Florida? Because I can tell you that was a travesty. I heard about that and I cried. How did that affect me, you might ask? Well, it made me feel like there was a huge loss of life and it was a travesty for all would you like to know what i discussed with my mother or my biological father i'll tell you come on folks let's get this party started I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are. I would love to know what kinds of things you want to know about me. I would love to get this ball rolling and get this party started and 
let me know if you're having a hard time hearing me on this or if you can hear me just fine let me know if the traffic in the background bothers you i'm actually looking into getting me a new headset that has noise canceling options so it'll cancel out the background noise so you guys can't hear the traffic which i know would probably be a huge relief to you i'm hoping with my hood on you can still hear me um it was kind of cold here this morning so that's why i have my hood on Oops, sorry, there goes the hand shaky shaky again. Would you like to know who my favorite YouTube stars are or who my favorite podcasts are would you like my email address for further questions if you don't want to email or if you don't want to comment on here you can always email me because it's not the email address that's attached to my account it's a different email address that I go by I actually have several email addresses And sorry that my camera keeps dropping today. My arm's kind of sore. You know, I woke up this morning and my ankle kind of hurt. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to get out there and walk. But I thought, no, I need to do this. I'm wanting to build up my channel. So I need to get out there and walk. Well, I am going to let you guys go for the day, and I will think of a new topic to discuss for tomorrow, and I will see you manana. Have a good day. Stay safe. Get out there and walk. Build up those endorphins, and peace out.